What's up, Giants fans? Welcome back to another Big Blue Avenue video. We're going to discuss the Giants losing their nose tackle, Dalvin Tomlinson, in free agency to the Minnesota Vikings, who signed him yesterday to a two-year, $22 million deal. Now, the Giants lose Dalvin Tomlinson, and I'm going to be honest. I'll give you my opinion, folks. I expected this from the very beginning. Um, I've been calling this since midseason. I know some people have been calling it sooner, but uh, the Giants have a history of not retaining their defensive tackles past their rookie contract. And this deal is actually a win for Dalvin Tomlinson. It's good short term for the Minnesota Vikings, but they are paying him a lot of money. And we'll get into, into the financial structure of this deal and then talk about a couple of the other Giants moves that have been made over the past 24 hours. So Tomlinson, he the contract is not really a two-year deal where he's making $11 million a year. That's not what it is. Tomlinson is getting paid $16 million this year fully guaranteed folks that is a lot of money so the vikings committed 16 million of their salary to dalvin tomlinson in 2021 that includes a 15 million signing bonus as well with this contract and uh you know i just want to say the giants would not have been able to do that no not for a defensive tackle that is and i love dalvin tomlinson he's a captain both on and off the field but he was a more replaceable player than Leonard Williams. You hate to see a guy like this walk just because I think it's good for the team business-wise. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to miss him. Of course I'm going to miss him. You know, of course it sucks. Like, I wish we would have kept him. The writing's been on the wall for him since the Giants drafted Dexter Lawrence in 2019, in my opinion, because that move kind of signaled to me that, hey, this guy's going to be here. And I think he's a Dave Gettleman guy. Rem remember Two, Dalvin Tomlinson was drafted before Dave Gettleman, before Joe Judge. So in hindsight, this is actually a good thing for the Giants because he got paid more than what he would have gotten from the Giants on a franchise tag. I know some people wanted to franchise tag him like we did with Leonard Williams last year. That franchise tag would have cost a lot of money. I know he was projected to get around 11 to 14 million in the open market, but Last year, he had a great year, Dalvin Tomlinson, 49 tackles, three and a half sacks, the best interior defensive lineman on the market in the trenches. And then this pretty much confirmed it on the books yesterday, right? When the Giants re-signed Austin Johnson to a $3 million deal, that officially confirmed to most Giants fans that DT was leaving. This is this contract for Austin Jack, uh, Austin Johnson, that is, is a $1.5 million salary that's fully guaranteed. But before we move any further along with it, I want I just want to show you guys a graphic as far as the Giants history with players that are similar to Dalvin Tomlinson and why I had a feeling this would happen. As you can see, it's been an ongoing trend since the year 2000, folks, that the Giants have not stuck with their defensive tackles. It dates back to Cornelius Griffin, followed by William Joseph, Barry Cofield as well. We might have picked up his fifth year, if I remember correctly. Linval Joseph also signed with the Vikings following his rookie contract with the Giants. Dalvin Tomlinson taking a similar route to Linval Joseph. And Jonathan Hankins as well, who, by the way, he's only 28 years old right now. We let him go when he was 24. So for me, I thought that was interesting. So I'm looking here at these numbers, and there's six guys that have come and gone. This is an ongoing trend, and this isn't just an ongoing trend with the Giants. It's common for this to happen in the NFL. So you look at all these names, they're very familiar. They weren't with the Giants very long. And yes, they went on to have successful NFL careers, but the Giants are really good at drafting this position as well. So I just wanted to run that through with you guys, give you guys a little visual. I like showing visuals as to why the Giants more than likely did this move. Now, potential replacements for Dalvin Tomlinson. Of course, there's free agency, and then there's the draft. Now, I know the Giants are very um, limited with what they can do in free agency. And I know there's rumors they reworked Nate Solder's contract. They're looking to clear some money up with the contracts of Bradbury and Martinez trying to restructure them. We know Gettleman hates restructuring deals, and so do I, but this is un uncharted waters, folks. Uh, <laughs> 2021, we were not expecting the cap to fall over 15 million from last season. So potential replacements are Kawan Short, former Carolina Panther, who in fact is a Dave Gettleman guy, 
Jonathan Hankins, a former Giant, who's only 28. Remember, he played for the Colts and then went over to the Raiders. Jarrell Casey's really interesting, too. He's a five-time Pro Bowler, five years in a row for the Titans. Uh, I don't think the Giants will take a defensive tackle to replace Tomlinson in free agency. I think they're going to run with um, Leonard Williams, B.J. Hill, Dexter Lawrence, and then, remember, you also have Austin Johnson and R.J. McIntosh on your roster. So that's a pretty solid five guys. R.J. McIntosh, a rookie, who, uh, rookie a year or two ago, who has not seen much time on the football field. Now, of course, yes, all Giant fans have a right to be concerned from losing Dallin Tomlinson because this is this will be a significant drop off at the zero tech position, and that's what Dallin Tomlinson was. We can draft a player like an Ali McNeil from NC State. Now I'm proje- I'm predicting the Giants to draft a defensive tackle in one of the early to mid rounds. Now, of course, this is considering the fact that we don't take one in free agency. So that's why I don't really like talking much about the draft until free agency is over. So Ali McNeil is a guy from NC State who can play that zero tech role. Um, the biggest question here, though, in my opinion, how does the loss of Dalvin Tomlinson impact Leonard Williams? Because it's funny, as I'm doing this show live right now, I, I just got the notification that Leonard Williams got his uh, three-year contract extension with the Giants. So I'll be doing a video on that uh, probably later tonight as well crazy this free agency period but this one's geared towards Tomlinson um I think Leonard Williams is going to have a little more trouble getting to the quarterback without the presence of Dalvin Tomlinson now that's assuming Lawrence and Hill can't compensate for that loss I think it's going to dip a little bit regardless of how those two players perform but I think Dexter Lawrence is going to take a huge step in year three and BJ Hill in year four now remember he's entering a contract year as well So I think Leonard Williams may see a drop off as far as sacks now that he has his contract one and he doesn't have Dalvin Tomlinson too. Um, But overall, I think he's still going to be an outstanding player and continue to make plays for us in 2021. Believe me, I hope the man gets far more than 11 and a half sacks in 2021. I'd be ecstatic with that. I think it's a real possibility, but we will see what happens. And, you know, there was rumors the Giants could have traded Dalvin Tomlinson to Green Bay there is some sort of interest there but I don't want to buy too much into that because remember you need two teams to trade you need two parties that are willing to trade a piece whether it's draft capital or a player it's not always easy to trade in the NFL a lot of people just assume why don't we just trade him why are we letting him walk away for nothing that's not how the business goes sometimes uh, we didn't know what the cap number was going to be literally until last week So it's definitely tough. It's definitely tough. But uh, moving on to the second of three parts in this video, I'm going to talk about Devontae Booker, who was signed yesterday. It was reported to be a two-year, $6 million deal. Uh, I've been hearing that's not exactly what he's making. Devontae Booker is a guy who played for the Las Vegas Raiders last year. He was the backup to Josh Jacobs. He was pretty good in relief. He started a couple games when Jacobs was out with injury. Booker, although he made a uh, minimum salary of $1.04 million with the Raiders, he's making more than that with the Giants. And, you know, this makes me think that Devontae Booker is a Joe Judge guy. Yeah, Joe Judge likes him a lot. He's a good pass catcher. He has the ability to play special teams. I know the Raiders didn't use him that much in the pass catching game, but you have to remember Josh Jacobs was a bell cow who played uh, a lot, a lot of downs on the football field last year as where we had issues at running back with um, Saquon Barkley. Now, Giants Giants fans should also know that a good part of the reason why I think we signed Devontae Booker is Wayne Gallman, in my personal opinion, was not like that much in the Giants organization. In week two against the Chicago Bears, he did not dress. That was the game that Saquon Barkley tore his ACL. Uh, Booker, where the Giants had to use uh, Deion Lewis. Booker is a very similar player to Wayne Gallman, although he does see a lot of less eight-man boxes than Gallman did. I think with Booker, the Giants can be a little more creative with their playbook as where when Gallman is in the game with, in an I formation um, or a single back uh, with only two receivers on the field, or if it's a multiple tight end set with Gallman in the game, that tells you run. Now, both of these players, Booker and Goldman, are both north and south runners between the tackles. However, 
Uh, Devontae Booker has a little more experience. He's 28, 29 years old. He's around there. Um, you know, this isn't a signing like a Jonathan Stewart that we made a couple of years ago. I was that was a head scratcher for sure. That was probably worse than the Levine Toy Lolo signing, actually. But um, yeah, Gallman was drafted by the Giants before Barkley. Gallman's an older player than Barkley. He was drafted in 17. Barkley was drafted in 18. Wayne Gallman's probably going to get a contract with another team because he's not coming back. There's no way. We just signed Devontae Booker. Um, you know, for me, we don't know what Gallman was asking for or what if the Giants had any intentions of re-signing him anyway. But Devontae Booker is a guy that obviously both Gettleman and Joe Judge like. The player's not the problem. It's the price for what we got him at. I, I don't know what it's going to be. I'm hearing 1.5. Take that with a grain of salt, though. Um, the whole details of that contract situation. Um, Devon, Devontae Booker, I just I don't want to get into the situation next year where he accounts for two to two and a half million against us in the books, because that's going to be a problem for me personally for a backup running back. That should never be the case. But you do have to invest in this position with Saquon Barkley, who has an injury history because the year before last year, 2019, Barkley had um, an injury as well that kept him out of a lot of games and it affected his play. So, yeah, it's a little concerning. Barkley's been banged up two years in a row now. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. And my problem with this is it's not just the money, but we could have gotten Devontae Booker a lot later in free agency. In my personal opinion, we could have waited a few weeks, maybe a month or two from now, and Devontae Booker still would have been out there. I thought the Giants would have went after a guy more like a James White or a Marlon Mack. Um, it's weird because you might as well have brought back Alfred Morris if, you know, he ran pretty well behind the, the line at times last year. But Devontae Booker is definitely an upgrade over him. He's a younger player. So it'll be interesting to see what the Giants do. And then one other move I want to touch upon before I start getting ready for uh, this Leonard Williams talk. Uh, the Giants signed former Texans fullback Colin Jalaspia per Giants.com. This happened today about an hour or two ago. The Giants add another special teams player and Colin, special teams standout for Houston who failed the physical. I think Colin will be able to contribute to our offensive backfield as a fullback. I don't know if we're going to keep Elijah Penny, especially after this move. Maybe uh, Colin is some competition for Penny. It'll be interesting to see how that unfolds because they're both fullbacks now on this roster. Uh, Colin missed the last seven games of the season. Colin Gillespie, that is, uh, of the 2020 season. He had a back injury that he was nursing, uh, forced him to land on injured reserve for Houston. And Colin Gillespie had played a little over 100 snaps last year, but only seven or eight on offense. So he he doesn't have a lot of offensive reps. Definitely uh, not much of an offensive uh, threat, but he was a seventh-round draft choice in 2019. So he has been around for a couple of years now. And as a rookie, he played in all 16 games, even though majority of them were on special teams. And for Joe Judge, he really values special teams, guys. We saw that last year with guys like Nate Ebner and when they re-signed Cody Core last season. So I think this signing is interesting. Maybe this is a replacement for a guy like Cody Core. Maybe they re-signed CJ Board because they wanted him to fill in Cody Core's role. We'll see what happens. But uh, Gillespie joined... Uh, the Texas A&M football team as a walk-on, actually. It's a real interesting story where he transitioned to the fullback position. So I'm interested to see what type of impact Colin Gillespie has on the New York football giants heading into 2021. As always, guys, if you like what you see here on our channel, make sure to follow us, subscribe, give us a little thumbs up, and we'll be back later tonight with a new video featuring the huge contract extension of Leonard Williams.